feel I need to tell my story. Because for the next generation, really, still. And um, to give them an insight of the realities of this lifestyle that they try to portray. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, the part that people don't really know. You don't really get told that part of it, this side of it. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's just about putting my story out there, letting them know what I went through personally and what I know other people went through personally and just giving them a different route to take. Brief background, brief background of the areas, like, like you said, South Manchester, Moss Side, Old Trafford, Fallowfield, Longside, all them areas. There's two main gangs in them areas, which was Gooch and Doddington. And you had like a lot of offshoots from that. And then we was affiliated with Gooch. So obviously the other side was Doddington, Longside and the rest of it. And um, basically what it was when we was growing up, when we was coming up, like I said, we was affiliated with Gooch, but then we decided to form our own so we could be ourselves kind of thing. So we didn't really have anyone to answer to. You know what I mean? So it was me and a couple of us, we started our own, which we called ourselves the OT Crips. And then, yeah, just started repping and just keeping up with a lot of gang activity. At them times, with anything that's like, obviously, like I said, I used to roll with certain of the older ones from about the age of 14, 15, I'd say. And it's only after the fact I started doing my own thing, representing. And um, yeah, the beef was, it was kind of, it was kind of intense, but you see when you're living it, when you're living that life, you're not really thinking of it like that, but, um, yeah, it was kind of intense from on the outside looking in now, now that I'm not involved in that anymore, I'm just thinking about it. Yeah, it was kind of intense shootouts, drive-bys, all them kind of things. It was, it was, um, it was a pretty bit hectic still. Two thousand six. What I ended up going to jail for? It was um, a shooting. Because basically what's happened, a few of the younger lot from me, they seen us doing certain things like um, taking off doors and getting car keys and taking people's cars and all them kind of things. So they started doing it, but where we used to go out of the area to do it, they was doing it in the local area. So they must have done it to the wrong person. And um, one of her relatives has come and approached me car, he knew. He knew it was my people, so he's come and approached me, saying me and him have got into an argument. He's saying we think we're bad because we got guns and rare, rare, rare. So then basically what happened then is, I, I just waved it off, I didn't think nothing of it. I had a, I had something on me, I had a gun on me at the time. But I was just thinking, you know what, it was just a small 2-5 little keyring thing. So I'm saying to my man, you know what, you don't even want it, car. realistically I could just, done you now so I've left just left it as that then later on that's when he phoned me and said he's um, coming to my mum's house and whatever else started making threats and from that we ended up going there and he ended up getting but he didn't even get shot his cousin got shot everything from about 2005 onwards everything was crazy so I think there was countless shootings, tick for tack shootings, police always in the area, armed response driving around. Armed response had a book with all our pictures in. So basically, if you're in that book, when they see you, they fly down on you. So um, there was a few cases, you had my case and about another five of us, all from our side. So um, yeah, two murders, a few attempted murders and loads of um, firearm charges. Mad. 
I had two separate cases. I had um, a shooting case and then a robbery case. So on the shooting one, it was just me and another man. But on the robbery one, it was me and four others. I ended up with a 12 IPP for conspiracy to murder, attempted murder, possession of a firearm with intent to danger lives, and then conspiracy to rob, robbery, and then about four or five firearm charges. But at the time, it was like nothing is like a part of the game, do you know what I mean? So feelings wise, I didn't really feel nothing because it's more like, yeah, I've proved myself now, I'm official. You understand what I'm saying? No one can't tell me nothing. So going through like sentencing and all that, even when I got back to jail, I'm in jail and all my bridgings are on the wing and when I'm telling them how long I got, they're all like sad and upset. I'm saying, what are you sad and upset for? Man, it's a part of the game, do you know what I mean? But that's just, I think that was more bravado. Do you know what I mean? Trying to live up to this image. During sentence, um, at first it was like, remember, because we was all young offenders, so we're like 18, 19 years old. The ones on the robbery case, they was a bit younger. They was like 15, 16. And then, um, yeah, it's more just, everyone's just on this, it's more immature and, do you know what I mean? It's only as time's gone on now, that's when everyone more starts to do their own thing. Do you know what I mean? And then people might fall off or the letters slow down and the visits slow down and all them kind of things. I would say my worst experience in the streets was when my own people started to turn on me. I would say that was my own one worst experience in the streets. It's like, um, I started getting a lot of attention. People started to like, my name was ringing bells in the streets. Saying with that now, with all the attention, come the hate as well. Do you know what I mean? So then you find people start spreading rumors about you and all them kind of things. and. Like I said, people stop coming to link you and all that try to take, like the people, I, my circle I used to roll with, man try to take them away and then try to turn them against man and all them kind of things. That it was mad, like I've been through a lot, but a lot of the things that I went through, I'd say I more charged it to the game, just put it down to it's the game, like I got shot, been shot numerous of occasions went to prison, all them kind of things, but none of them things really fazed me at the time because it's more like a charge it to the game. No, not really. That's, that's one of the big issues. That's a very big issue of mine to this day. That's why I can't really look at people the same way. Like, I ain't holding no feelings towards anyone. But what I say is, when I was on road, I would do or die for mines. Do you know what I mean? So then when I was in a time of need, I weren't really seeing or hearing from nobody. People would come on a visit just to say, I went on a visit, not really coming to link me, you understand what I'm saying? Things like sending money and all them kind of things. It was pre pretty much non-existent. I remember there was a time when me and my cold D and then my right hand man, we was all in the, in the pen together. And all three of us are sat there and I'm saying to man like, yo, what, what's this? How, how are we living like this? Well, we was the three most active in our circle. And it's like, how are we living like this? You understand what I'm saying? You have to phone five different men to put two to a hundred pounds for a weed. You get me? Or men are sharing shower gels and all them kind of things. And nobody ain't got no peas on, on, on the canteen sheet a, a week time, you get me? So I'm thinking, how are we living like this when we've done so much for these men? Hence the reason we're in jail and they're on road. For me, the, like, the thing that hit me the most, cause when I first went to jail, I remember, when I first landed in jail, I sat and I said to my cold I said, you know what, we're on a big charge. I'm saying if, if I don't get to see my gran again, the people that are responsible for putting me in there, somebody's gonna die. You know what I'm saying? And then years down the line, 2012, my gran actually passed away. 
So then that's when I'm sat there and I'm thinking to myself like, what am I gonna do here now? Am I gonna stick to what I said? Or am I gonna just turn it around and make her proud, you get me? Cause all them kind of things. I tried putting for the funeral, to refuse me. All these kind of things, even like getting an order of service sent in, it's going missing in the post. All these little games are being played, you get me? So I think that was the darkest time for me in jail. The switch was more, that was part of it. Like that's when I'm sat, that's when I started thinking to myself. So I started thinking to myself. So 2012, so this would have been about five, five years, five, six years. Yeah, about five years, yeah. So just, just before halfway. So, um, and then around that same time as well is when I got back with my missus. So like 2012, again, back end of 2012. So it's almost like everything hit me at that same point. So losing my gran, that triggered the thought process. And then getting with my partner now, it was like, I had to start, that's when, that's when my whole thought pattern changed. I started sitting there and I started thinking to myself, like, what am I really doing with my life when I touch road? You get me, car? That's, that's the thing. It's like, as much as we're living that lifestyle and we're doing whatever we're doing, we're living in the fast lane. So you get money, you get cars, you get all these kind of things. But at the same time, as, as quick as you're getting these things, your life could be taken away, whether that's you're dead or in jail. But truth be told, it's like at first, when I first landed, so 2007 when I first landed in jail, I'm in there, but the thing for me, it's like when I'm in, local prisons everybody knows you in it so it's more or less you like you're on the road so you see a man that you've not seen for years you seeing people like you, you don't even know who they are but they know who you are so man are coming to you like right you're such and such from do you understand what i'm saying so it's like all these kind of things so when you in that kind of environment it's still like i'm on the roads and you're crossing paths with the other side and you're getting into gang fights and all them kind of things and you still kind of involved in that. I got moved from that prison to another prison. So when I was 19, I ended up in Strangeways. So the majority of people I am with are 21 and over. So I'm 19, so I'm with these. So when these men are talking to me, I'm with some OGs from, from, my, from my set. So when I'm talking to these and these lot are talking to me, I'm thinking, hold on. What you're saying to me isn't what I was told along the way. Do you know what I'm saying? So when I'm listening to these and I'm hearing what they're saying, I'm thinking, right, you ain't really got to, anytime you see them, man, it's funk on sight and all them kind of things. These are the things that I started to realize when I'm with them. Do you know what I mean? And that's another thing I wanted to, to, to touch upon. It's like when, we're coming up in the game, so think about it like 13, 14 years old, and then you've got the man, man them above you that are like, I say 18, 19, and they're trying to, they're teaching you to be a savage. They're teaching you that anytime you see this, anytime you see that, do this, do that, do this, do that. So now you've got that instilled in your brain. Do you know what I'm saying? So then when all these things are going on, it's like, again, because I never went jail before I went jail in 2007, so. I've landed in jail, so when I'm in, in jail now, I'm hearing what they're telling me. Anytime you see them, man, it's on site, rare, rare, rare. Even on road, if you see them, man, it's this, it's that. Don't worry about nothing. Just lick them down, do this, do that. So, all right, safe. But then going back to what I was saying, it's like, as years go by, like even in prison life, and I'm hearing mad stories, like these same man were saying to me, when you see this, man, when you see that, do this, do that. I'm hearing stories, are you with, in jail with these man and nothing ain't going in. So I'm thinking to myself, hold on, so you're telling me to do this and do that, but you're not even doing it yourself, bro. And the same thing on road, like you're telling man on road, do this, do that. You're not doing the same thing, brother. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, as I got older and more mature, it's like I started to see these things and started to realize, you get me that it's kind of, the whole thing's based on lies to be fair.
Yeah, no, it was mad. Car. I went to open prison, so for my last year, so 2018, I went to open prison. So while I'm in open prison, that was a mad environment anyway, car. There's no walls, there's no fences, no nothing. So when I'm in there, it's kind of mentally preparing me for the outside world. But when I started getting town visits and that I'm going out to the town, but the ends I was in was just, it was a, a random ends, innit? But when I started getting homelies now, I'm going more back to my ends. Do you know what I'm saying? So now all these things start playing in my mind. So the ends they put me in back in the day was a gang related area. But for the other side, if you know what I mean. So I'm thinking, in my head, I'm thinking, right, you're just sending me here. Them man around here. And you get me, you're kind of trying to set man up. You get me? So when I've gone around there, I'm in there. So when I first got off the train, got there, I'm going to the hostel. In my head, I'm thinking it's still like it was in 2007. You get me? So you're kind of on edge, you're watching everything and all them kind of things. But then after time went on, I started to get more relaxed and I started to see it for what it really is. Do you know what I'm saying? It's more like, you see the thing for me, I started to realize it's all internal. It's all in my head. Do you know what I mean? Like not saying man's overly paranoid, but a bit paranoid, on point, I'd like to say. So then when I'm out there, it's like, I've come to realize that everybody's doing them. Do you know what I mean? So I've come out with this 2007 mindset when everybody else is on a 2019. You understand what I'm saying? So I was a bit behind the times. Do you know what I mean? And a mad story as well. One of the people what shot me, he's reached out to me on social media. So I'm chatting to my man and I'm saying to him like, I'm not really on nothing. Do you know what I'm saying? He's saying he's not on nothing, but in the back of his mind, he's thinking, I'm just saying it, car. And I'm thinking the same thing. So it was a bit of a tense situation. But then it, in the end, it just turned into, you know what? It is what it is. You've said that, I've said this. When you're with your people, just keep that same energy. When I'm with my people, I'll do the same. And that's it, what more can you say? Like for me, because I, when I first come out, I was trying to get work, going to agencies, doing all these things. Then I decided to do the self-employed thing. Because even throughout my whole sentence, I've done all these vocational courses to get the qualifications, to do all these kind of things. So for me, it's like, I've been taking steps to try and kickstart this self-employed thing. Do you know what I mean, but it's just, it's, it's a bit hard, it's about finding that break. Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's what, I'm glad you said that, Kai. It's like, when I first come out and these things go on, I'm sat there thinking, right, why ain't no one helping? Why ain't no one supporting? Why ain't no one doing this? Why ain't no one doing that? If it was me, I would do this and I would do that. But then, as time went on, I started to think to myself, you know, I said, you know what? They've got their life to live and I've got mine. You understand what I'm saying? So as much as, some people have been supportive and, you know, try to help, man, and even offer advice and whatever else. But there's still a few others that haven't really done anything. So it's like, I just look at it and think, can I really be mad at that? Do you know what I'm saying? It's just one of them things. Yeah. Yeah, because like I said, I was in open open jail before I come out, so my home leaves and whatever else. So when I've, when I've come out now is when I found out that my partner's pregnant. So we're going through all that. The baby was due in, I came out in November, when the baby was due in like March. So we was just chilling, everything's just chilling, just, you know, everything's all happy, excited and all in. And then one day she started getting pain, so I'm thinking, right, what, what, what's up, you get me? So I think somebody said to me, you need to get a test. And then if it comes back positive, I don't know, some madness. It says she's in labor. So basically what's happened, she's in pain. It turns out she's in labor. So then where she's had to go, I can't go because of my exclusions on. 
part of my license conditions that I can't I can't go into South Manchester or the city centre. Do you know what I mean? So I can't, if I go in there, I'm going to get recalled. So where she needed to go, the hospital was in my exclusion zone. Do you know what I mean? So I couldn't even go. So then she's gone. So I'm, I've gone back to the hostel. So I'm sat there thinking like, well, what's happening? You get me then? That's when they found out the babies come out and complications and just weren't breathing. So at first I used to sit and think to myself like, it's like everything happens to me. Everything happens to me. But then one of one, one friend that I met, I actually met him in prison and he's turned out to be like a true friend. My man saying to me, he says, you know what? You're not faced with situations that you can't handle. You understand what I'm saying? Like every situation you're faced with, God knows you can handle. So all these little things that are going on, like you know you can handle it. Do you know what I mean? So you just got to keep that same mindset. And it's like, I, sometimes I sit there and I think, yeah, it's easy for you to say, innit, bro? It's easy for you to say, Kai, you're not really the one going through it. But then, as time goes on, I start to see it. I start to see these little things and then it's mad. It's like, when I see someone else going through that same thing now, it's almost like, you know what? I find myself saying them same things to them. Like, you know what? It's true. It's hard right now, but then it, it, it gets better. It gets better, man. Like, truth be told, never regret anything you've done. You understand what I'm saying? Like, never regret anything you've done. It's like, even with certain things when I'm in situations and I feel like, oh, I can't really apply for that job because I got a past and I got this and I got that. So it's like, for me, it's like, to get where you're going, always remember where you've been. You get me? So it's, for me, it's like, I own it. Everything I've done, I own it. Do you know what I mean? So if, if I tell you my truth and you don't really want to bother with me because of it, I'm not, really, I'm not really shying away from who I am and what I was about. Do you understand what I'm saying? It, it's a part of my story. It's a part of my journey. Because it was a night shift. So he's saying, say, let's say he said, can you be there for 10 o'clock? I'm saying, yeah, I can do that. I don't mind working nights. No, are you sure you can be there? I'm saying I can be there. I said, but one thing though, I need to ask probation because I'm on a curfew right now. He's like, what do you mean on a curfew? So I'm saying, I'm, I'm on a curfew, you know, I've just got out of jail and whatever. As soon as I said I got out of jail, my man was more or less just shut his book and said, yeah, boom, yeah, it's not gonna work. So I'm like, what do you mean it's not gonna work? And he's like, it's not gonna work. Like, basically, he don't really want to put his, his name to me as an agency, so I'm thinking, I said, you know what? It's cool, isn't it? Like, I can't really be mad at that. I have them moments, I'd say, I used to have them all the time, but now they've started to fade a bit. But 100%, as soon as something happens, you instantly think, rah, you see, because I'm trying to do this now, you want to try tape, man, for, you understand what I'm saying? And then, then thoughts start slipping back into your mind. You start thinking, hold on. Now, if I was really on wickedness, would you really be talking to me like this? Do you know what I'm saying? Because it's mad. When I first come out, you've got everybody on your line. Everybody's hollering at your Instagram, this and that, and shouting, man, and whatever else. But I'm telling everybody the same thing. I'm saying to them, bro, I'm not really on all that, you know. I'm going to try to do this personal training thing, this motivational speaking and them kind of things. And... Man, are like, yeah, yeah, but, you know, just let me come and link you. I said, you know what, all right. Cool, when do you want a link, man? Oh, no, I'll come down with my daughter and I'm thinking, so what are you bringing your daughter for? You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, you kind of think I'm still on what I was on before, so you're bringing your daughter because you know if you're with your daughter, I'm not really going to be on nothing. So it's like, for me, I feel they know they've done me wrong and they kind of avoid that one-to-one, -one, face to face thing, do you know what I mean? But yeah, all the time, like, things will happen, or even like, you might even speak to someone else and someone says, right, you know, such and such, them man done this or them man done that, and I'm thinking to myself, hold on. You know man's out of jail. Everyone I'm speaking to and I'm speaking about, they've been to prison, they've been through all these things. So you know, 
what I'm coming out to. Do you know what I'm saying? And you, you're not really doing nothing for me. All right, you might throw man a little change or whatever else, and then that's it. I don't hear from you again. It's mad, man. Or block me on social media. I don't even know what they block me for. I don't People. know. What no, when 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 I first come out and they stop reaching out, and I, I just thought to myself, you know what? It's all fake anyway. You like you don't really taught me anything new. Do you know what I'm saying? You've kind of just confirmed everything I already knew. Do you know what I'm saying? Because like I said before, like people will say to you, right, do this and do that. Then you look at that same man's resume and you're thinking, bro, you ain't done half the things you're telling me to do. You ain't done half the things you're trying to get these young books to do. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's one thing I'd like to say as well. It's like people automatically assume that if you're in a situation, you got the olders telling you what to do. So if you're going to do something, do it to the fullest. You understand what I'm saying? Don't come on no half-stepping thing and say you're involved in this but then you're not doing that or you're chilling with this person or chilling with that. If you're going to do something, do it to the fullest. And that was my mentality at the time. Yeah, and no, it's mad like, it's, it's almost like, it's a, like you said, it's a brand new situation so it's hard like even little things like registering your business on company house and all them kind of things like i'm thinking i can just get out of jail say look i'm a personal trainer make a website do this and then start earning though do you know what i mean but it's mad it it's hard and then on top of that i just sit there and i think to myself i know for a fact i could make two phone calls now and be up do you know what i mean so like that's the tug of war what I go through on a, on a lot of the time. It's like, I could make a phone call now and be up and everyone around me is eating. Or I can stick to this and then not have to look over my shoulder and then it's more rewarding, do you know what I mean? I just want them to hear the story and, and be inspired by it. Do you know what I mean, Car? There's a lot. Don't get me wrong, you know, Car. I listen to a lot of this music and this and that, but you see for a naive kid that's hearing these music and these bars and all these kind of things, they're thinking to themselves, right, this is what I need to do. Talking about splashing this and that. And so now they're going out on the madness. But this is what I try to put out there. I'm saying, these men what are saying these things, as much as they're talking reckless, they're getting paid for it. They've got a platform for all these things. Now you're hearing what they're saying, so you're thinking, oh, I want to be like my man. Then you go do what my man's doing, now you've just caught a body. He's getting paid for rapping about it, whether it's real life or not. You understand what I'm saying? Because I know there's a few real rappers out there, so they're chatting their story. Do you know what I'm saying? And they're getting paid for it, bro. So they kind of turned that negative into a positive. But then these young bucks are hearing that and then wanting to live that lifestyle, like hear what he's saying, do you know what I mean? So like, for me, I feel like I'm putting out a different version of events. Do you know what I'm saying? This is the part that you don't really hear about. You don't really hear about in jail where you ain't got no dough and all them kind of things and you and your brethren's them are sharing shower gel and all them kind of madness. You ain't hearing none of them things, but you might hear in that, oh, I was in the pen with my man, you know, my man was benching. 180 and that, yo, my mum was doing this, my mum knocked out my mum, you understand what I'm saying? But you're not hearing the realities of it, bro. I just want people to hear my story. Straight up and down, just hear my story. Just get at me if like, cause that's how it, when I first come out, that's how it first started. I put out that first video. I just want people to hear my story. And if anyone's out there going through anything, just shout, man, innit? Sometimes you just need someone to speak to. So just chat to man, do you know what I mean? Like do this training thing even just chatting, motivational, hear my story, be inspired and there's loads of different things, man. So what I need personally is just people to hear my side of the story, car. That's, that's what I think isn't really happening. Do you know what I mean? I think a lot of people are seeing me doing what I'm doing and thinking, nah, he's just trying to do this or just trying to do that. Like it's mad, even I Googled myself the other day and there's bare little mad things on Google saying, oh, Kieran Proverbs got out of jail at this time, so he started up a personal training business, so I started this at this time, and he's just got out of prison and rare arrest. I'm thinking, it's like, it's like you're doing these mad things to try and block me. 
And I'm, I'm just trying to turn my life around. Do you know what I mean?